Namaste friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Yogi Aaron and I am a muscle activation specialist as well as a master yoga teacher. I'm also the owner of this beautiful place that we call Blue Osa Yoga Retreat and Spa in Costa Rica. I hope that you come down and join me for practice one day soon here. I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about broken wing yoga pose. Now I've already made a video about it and you can watch it here if you want to see more about it or just we'll put the link in the uh, comments below. It's a great video and it kind of goes into why this yoga pose is so bad for you. A lot of people are really into this yoga pose and you can see different variations of it uh, here. This yoga pose basically is where you put your arm on the ground and you stretch your body away from your arm. What you're essentially doing is overstretching all of the pectoral muscles, even anterior delts, um, and also getting a little bit into the serratus. And any time that we start to stretch, we're going to create flexibility. And anytime we have flexibility, there's always going to be instability in the joints, always. And whenever we have instability, it's always going to lead to injury. Anybody you talk to who has a deep stretching program always suffers from injuries. Now, they may not voice it out loud, but you will hear them talk about their aches and pains in their body. Why do they have aches and pains? Because there's instability in the joints. And instability creates stress, and stress creates inflammation, and it's the inflammation that's going to cause problems. When I used to work out a lot, I used to always stretch my shoulder joints, um, do all of those, you know, typical stretches that you see these kind of weightlifters and, and bodybuilders do. It's absolutely the wrong thing to do. You do not want to stretch the shoulders. Now, in the previous video, I did this demonstration where I brought my arm out to the side and I said, okay, well then let's mimic uh, broken wing pose, but do it, doing it dynamically. So basically I said, you know, bring your arm back. Well, before we did the exercises, I could only bring my arm back about 15 degrees. After the exercises, I could actually bring it back more than two times what I could do before I did the muscle activation postures. When we start to activate muscles, we actually increase range of motion, but here's the, the kicker. We increase range of motion, but we have stability within that range of motion. So when I could bring my arm farther back, I had strength, my muscles had force output. And more importantly, the muscles are connected to my central nervous system. So a healthy muscle is a muscle that can contract and can contract on demand. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. You always will be unstable and you'll always be open and vulnerable to injury. That's not how I want you to walk through life. I also kind of want to just put one other idea out there, which I talked about in the previous video, which is that when you you know, these people that are saying, oh, we have to stretch. We have to stretch the shoulders. We have to create space in the shoulders. My first suggestion is anytime you hear someone talking about the need to create space in the shoulders, don't walk away, run the opposite direction. Sprint the opposite direction because they have no clue what they're talking about in terms of biomechanics, in terms of the shoulder joints, <laughs> in terms of, of how muscles actually function. So we actually want those muscles to be activated, to be strong, so that they are holding the shoulder joint together. <laughs> Not letting the shoulders come out. And you think about if you're gonna create space in the shoulder socket, whatever that means, then you're actually talking about dislocating the shoulder joint. And people who have dislocated their shoulder joints will tell you it's not how you want to walk through life. <laughs> so what I wanted to do is just kind of go through a couple of really simple and easy exercises. Now I'm sitting in Vajrasana. Um, you can actually do this standing. Why don't we do this standing? Because standing is a little bit more dynamic. This is sitting pose is a little bit more passive. You can also sit in a chair too. Sitting in a chair would be absolutely perfect. But for today, Let's come up and stand up. Okay, so we're gonna just do some very simple um, shoulder exercises here. So very simple. First one, to start doing these shoulder shrugs. 
Now I bent my elbows here, keep your arms straight and then slowly lower down. What we're actually starting to do here is activate all of the muscles that are connected to the scapula, that are connected uh, to the shoulder joints. And right now we're working a couple of muscles. We're working the levator scapular. So as we start to drop the shoulders, the levator is starting to engage. We're, as we lift the shoulders up, we're engaging the upper trapezius and then slowly lower down. And then come up. And move slowly. So we're really working on engaging those slow twitch muscle fibers. It's those slow twitch muscle fibers that in, engender uh, stability. So when you work out a lot, you tend to overuse your fast twitch muscle fibers. If you never train your slow twitch muscle fibers, they actually start to take on fast twitch uh, characteristics. And that's not really a good thing. They're actually meant to um, be more uh, anaerobic and they tend to need to, or their function really is to stabilize, to be able to contract and contract on demand. So when we talk about force output, we're really talking about the slow twitch muscle fibers, their ability to engage properly. Okay, now let's activate the arms. So let's keep that kind of idea, lift the arms up go to your own tissue tension so don't force a range of motion like that's my tissue tension yes i can bring my arms up but my shoulders aren't doing anything i'm sort of starting to bend the elbows a little bit to do that so just come up to tissue tension and then lift the shoulders towards the ears and then relax the shoulders and then relax the arms and let's do that a couple more times okay so lift the arms up to tissue tension and then lift the shoulders and go easy. Remember that one of the number one rules in a yama or guidelines or axioms, <laughs> some people don't like the word rule, um, is that less is more. So we always wanna have a little bit less is more kind of quality in the way that we start to do muscle activation. All we're trying to do is stimulate the gamma motor neurons, the intrafusal muscle fibers, so that they send messages to the central nervous system saying, hey guys, we need to contract, we're here. And the central nervous system sends a message back and says, hey, yeah, contract, okay. And that's how you start to build stability is improving that communication system between the brain and the muscles. That's all we're doing. We're not working at a muscular level. This is not a workout. This is per se, okay? This is, yeah, we're getting a little bit of exercise, which is nice, but this is really just a nice, gentle, and easy technique to activate your muscles and to improve that communication system. Now, I would actually argue that if we do this enough, we actually will start to build up muscle strength because as we go back out into life, our body is starting to be used in a proper way, that all the muscles are being used, okay? So now let's do another one here. I want you to, you don't have to move your body, I'm just moving mine for the camera. You're gonna bring your arms out, okay? And push forward. Now keep, don't hunch your upper back, okay? I don't want you to hunch. Just come push the arms forward like you're pushing into a wall and then relax. Okay, now let's kind of add another movement here. You're gonna bring the arms up, flex the, the fingers back, bring the arms forward and start to protract the shoulder blades, meaning push the hands forward. It almost looks like you're rounding in the upper back, but you're not. And then lower down and do that again. Lift the arms up, pull the fingers back, Good. Bring the hands forward, push forward, and then keep pushing down as you bring the arms down. Nice. Bring the arms up. Let's do that a couple more times. Pull the fingers back. Push the arms forward. 
and then lower down. Keep pushing down. Isn't that wonderful? Do you feel like more fluidity in your shoulders? That fluidity is not looseness. That fluidity is because all the muscles that are controlling the shoulder as you move the shoulders around are able to contract properly. That means that those muscles are working. It's not necessarily loose. It may, you may interpret it as loose, but it's not loose. It's just the muscles are working. They're moving the shoulder properly. Let's do it two more times. Bring the arms up, pull the fingers back, bring the arms forward, push the hands forward. And then lower down. Bring the arms up, pull the fingers back. Bring the arms forward, push the arms forward. Push them forwards. Very good. And then lower the hands down. Let's do one more here. So what you're gonna do is pretend that you're holding on to a ball, a beach ball, if you will, and bring the arms up. Now again, go to your own tissue tension. So some of you might feel tissue tension here, some might be here, some might be here. What I don't want you to do though is start to come into a back bend. So keep your spine erect and solid, but just come bring the, bring the ball, that imaginary ball into tissue tension and then slowly lower it down. Very good. And bring that ball up. Nice. So what muscle is this activating? It's activating a few, but more specifically, the serratus anterior inferior fiber. So the lower part of the serratus anterior. The thing that we just did when we were pushing forward, that was the serratus anterior superior fiber. So the upper part of the serratus. Let's do it again. Bring the arm up. Now the serratus is so important. If you do that broken wing yoga pose, you're going to actually weaken the serratus. It's such an important muscle because it maintains so much stability in the shoulder girdle and uh, the shoulder blade in relationship to as you move the shoulder around. Anytime you do push-ups, if your serratus anterior is not activated, you're going to cause a lot of stress in the shoulder girdle in the shoulder blade and shoulder muscles. And one of the areas that actually ends up taking a lot of the brunt of the uh, serratus anterior not working is your bicep muscle. So you wanna make sure that the serratus is working so that all the stress of your push-up, for example, is not coming into your bicep. One of the number one areas that yoga people always complain about is right in front of their shoulder. It's actually called the bicep tendon. And it's so common because so much inflammation there because it's been overused due to stress and trauma of holding the upper body because none of the other muscles of the body are actually working. Okay, so let's bring that beach ball back up. We'll do it a couple more times. And you might notice that tissue tension starts to feel different, that your range of motion changes because that serratus is starting to engage properly. Remember that we're moving nice and slow. We're not moving fast. So we're not kind of springing the arms up, okay? It kind of looks fun and can be interesting to create some energy, but from a muscle activation perspective, it absolutely does nothing. So we want to move slowly up and we're holding for about six seconds. And then slowly back down. Very good. My friends, those are just a few examples. Please feel free to experiment on your own. Anytime you do stuff like this, it's going to be dynamic, it's gonna be active, and more importantly, you're going to have strength in your muscles. Your muscles will have a strong force output. You'll improve their ability to contract and contract on demand, and therefore increase stability in your shoulder joint. Doing the opposite of what that silly yoga pose called broken wing yoga pose does, which creates more instability, which always leads to injury. Happy practicing, my friends. Namaste. Thank you for joining me and see you in the next video.